All right, now we're on to day five. We're looking at theoretical probability of compound events. So we'll just get right into some examples. There's some theory in your notes, but let's just jump down here. And we'll start with you knowing that in a box, um, there are 37 red pens, 120 black pens, 43 blue pens. And if we're going to pick at random, what is the probability that the pen is red? Well, it's 37 are red, and the total is, well, I'm going to be a bit lazy here, 120 plus 37 plus 43, 200. Oh, I was really lazy there. That was, that was some bad arithmetic. <laughs> All right, what is the probability then that they are not red, and what do you call that in relation to the red? They are complementary events. So therefore, if 37 are red, how many are not red? 163, is that right? Good. Now we see this new word, or. The probability that you're red or black, you're either red or you're black. You can pull those together, 120 plus 37 out of 200, which gives us 157 out of 200. Let's just clean that five up a bit. Is that cleaner? Mm -hmm. It's a pretty terrible I five. think that's okay, I can tell it's a five. Yeah. I think, I, I think, uh, there we go. Super. Okay. Number two here, we're going to take a pair of dice. These dice have sides, regular dice, so one to six. Draw a grid to represent all 36 possibilities and use the grid to determine the probability. Before I go diving into trying to answer these one at a time, I think it's nice to just see what we're dealing with. So... Let's take this dice, 1 to 6, ay, ay, ay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, should have probably used the straight tool, right? There it is. Never too late to start. <laughs> exactly. So, there's some nice symmetries in the table, I kind of, I don't know, somehow it gives me satisfaction drawing this table. So a 1 and a 1 gives 2, 2 and a 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 2 and a 1 gives 3, and we just keep counting up. It's almost therapeutic doing this. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 7, 8, 9. 9, 10, 11, and 12. And then sometimes what I like to do, just to keep things a bit separate, oops, I missed it, is so that I know the difference between what my values are and this is my sample space. These six numbers and those times those six numbers. So with number one, 2a, what is the probability that I would get two threes? So a 3 here and a 3 here gives me 6, and there's only one way out of 36 to get that. What do you think about the next one, Mr. Song? Okay, a 5 and a 6. So, 5 and a 6. So we can have the first die, whichever one is first, it could be 5 and 6, or we can get a 6 and a 5. So there and there. So we have two such events out of 36, so the probability is two out of 36. Excellent, and then we change it subtly so that we have a five or a six. So the or is the union, and we get much more out of that, don't we? Mm -hmm. So if we get a five, so all the different ways you could get a five, all the different ways you get a six on that particular dice, and here's all the different ways you can get a five, and all the different ways you can get a 6 on that particular dice. So all of these events are what we're interested in, but we don't count these twice. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 out of 36. Good. And the next one is a sum of 7. So because we already wrote down the sums, there's 1, 2, three, four, five, six k 
cases where you have a sum of 7, so 6 out of 36. And finally, a sum greater than, but not equal, so greater than 8. So, I don't know, I'm running out of colors and options here. Let's stick with black. Sum greater than 8. So that's all these guys here. So, 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1, 10 out of 36. Good. And notice that drawing that table at first, it took a long time, but it, it was worth it, right? You were able to answer all those questions with relative ease. We come back to just a reminder of the word complement. Complement of an event is when it does not occur. I won't read through this again because we, we've gone through it, but it's always good to have a reminder of what's going on. But this is a bit new. Now we have this term compound events and compound events are if two or more events cannot occur simultaneously, then they can be mutually exclusive. So this is a subset of the compound events. For example, if a coin is tossed, either a head or a tail will turn up, but both events cannot occur in one throw. So this is sometimes referred to as the OR rule for mutually exclusive events or disjoint events. Probability of A or B is the symbol is the probability of A plus the probability of B if we have no overlap, if they are mutually exclusive events. So here's an example where right. you have this situation of compound events where the events are mutually exclusive. Okay, so let's look at example one. One ball is selected at random from a bag containing five red balls, two yellow balls, and four white balls. Find the probability of selecting a red ball or a white ball. So probability of red or a white ball is going to be probability of picking a red ball plus probability of picking a white ball because you can't have a red um, red and a white are mutually exclusive events they can happen at the same time um, so the probability of red is 5 out of 11 plus the white is 4 out of 11. It's going to be 9 out of 11. Excellent. Next. If the events are not mutually ex exclusive, this means that they share common outcomes. That is, we must watch out for and eliminate the overlapping outcome in order to avoid counting the area twice. You want to take it? Sure. So if we're looking at this kind of event, find the probability of turning up an even number or a number greater than 3. So numbers that are greater than 3 include 4, which is even. Therefore, we're not mutually exclusive. So we have to, um, let me see here if I put it down a bit further. Nope, it's on the next page. So we have to think about, I'm going to do it first as uh, we did in the previous day, day 3, and then by listing the sample space, and then we'll generalize how we would solve this for more challenging problems where it might be more difficult to list the sample space. So if we're having a look here, the probability of turning up an even, 2, 4, 6, or a number greater than 3, so a number greater than 3 would also include the 5, right, on a dice, we can see that our answer is 4 out of 6. Okay, that one's easy with the sample space, but we're going to come up with a generalization and then check that we can solve more challenging problems with that generalization. The generalization stated formally is the probability of the union of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B. Now this is the new piece, subtract the probability of the intersection if A and B are not mutually exclusive. And here's an example where it would be harder to come up with the sample space, and you'll see why this law is important to us. Okay, example two. As a result of a recent survey conducted by the Substance Abuse League, it was estimated that 85% of the targeted population enjoy an alcoholic beverage at least once a week, 35% of the population smokes at least one cigarette a day, and 25% of the population indulges in both habits. 
Find the probability that an individual chosen at random from the targeted population either smokes or drinks alcohol. Okay. So Let's probability. See. Probability of. Let's just write the S for smokes. Union. So or D for drinks. Okay. And then we can follow probability yeah. of S plus the probability that they drink minus the probability of the intersection. So these are not mutually exclusive. We're going to have an, 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 some simplification. So probability that they smoke is how much? Oof, where is it? Okay, Point, I think it's 3.5, right? 3.5, that's right. 0.35 plus drinking is 0.85 mm -hmm. and smoking and drinking is 0.25. Good. So if we add these together and okay. subtract, it's 0 0.95. That's uh, an, quite an un unhealthy population. Right, I would say so.